Hey, what's going on? Thanks for coming to Head First Fishing. I'm Captain Joseph Rains. Welcome to The Breakdown. This is where I go further into detail on previous HFF videos and give you more tips and insight into what's going on in the video and hopefully you can apply it on your next fishing trip. So this is a top water fishing video we did uh, a couple months back, uh, late summer, early fall time. Starting to think about top water fishing, went to an area I've been eyeballing on Google Maps, been really wanting to fish this area. A lot of islands and oyster bars back here, really fishy looking spot in Tampa Bay. So uh, I've got my good friend here, the Rapala Skitter Walk. It's my favorite top water lure. Really great fresh water, salt water, doesn't matter. The hardware is good, the eyes look great. The hooks have held up for me well. I haven't had any problems there. Caught a lot of fish on this bait, highly recommend it. So I'm gonna move on to the next bait here. There is the live target Twitch and Minnow. Really good soft bait. I rig it weedless. You can, you can really you can work it about the same as the skitter walk, uh, especially if the fish are being aggressive. The fish were really aggressive on this trip, and so when I was having problems snagging a lot of seagrass with the skitter walk, I switched to the weedless Texas style rig on this bait and started catching fish. Uh, they did stop hitting that and then I went back to the skitter walk and just cleaned up, but it was a it was a really good day Let's move forward a little bit more Florida fishing products osprey spinning reels can't say enough great product. I love them Check them out their distance braided line is really good, too. It's actually become one of my favorite braided lines Moving ahead so I'll stop right here for just a second because I want to explain a couple things that are really important. So here we have a mangrove lined point. It's a shoreline with a bunch of mangroves on it and it's a pretty narrow little strip of land. Um, around the corner right here you see the open bay that goes out in the Tampa Bay and there's a big seagrass flat out here. Lots of seagrass beds in here. It's pretty shallow in here. Right now it's low tide and on low tide a general rule of thumb is that a lot of the fish that will be up pushed up into the mangroves are going to make their way out of the mangroves and come out into the depth of water that they find comfortable. And when the tide gets low, a lot of the fish will find a zone and they'll stay in that zone. And I found the zone on this trip to be about 10 to 20 yards off the mangroves. So if the water was higher, I would have my boat a little bit closer to the mangroves and I'll be making casts and working my baits right outside the edges of the mangrove branches and leaves. But now the water is real low, the fish have come further out, so I'm making longer casts. Nice little snook there, basically just explaining the same thing. This whole flat is coming alive. We pulled into this spot, starting out filming tip videos, and then the fish started feeding all around us, blasting the bait fish. There's mullet schools all out here. It's still pretty shallow out here. There is a deeper hole kind of in this area over here. Gets shallow again along that shoreline. And then off in this direction, it gets shallow. Um, so there was a big concentration of bait fish. There was adult mullet, there was juvenile mullet, there was white bait. A lot of food for these predators. Let's move up a little bit. All right, this is a really key shot right here, so I want you to take notice of what's going on. So there's that same mangrove point right there. So if you look right here, those ripples, that's bait fish right there. So these predators have keyed in on that. That bait is relatively isolated. It can't really go too far, can't really run too far without getting blasted. It's balled up right there. And the snook and redfish were just going bananas attacking this bait. So I was trying to film little tip videos and things were going crazy. So I decided to stop that and start fishing. And I immediately had my skitter walk followed and hit by a redfish. The day was to continue basically like that. I would throw towards the point and work my lower back and anywhere from just outside this point to, you know, 40 or 50 yards inside. Uh, they would hit it within a certain zone typically. Let's move ahead. So here is the zone. Like I was saying, 
on a higher water situation, a lot of times these fish will be pushed up closer to the mangroves. They don't necessarily have to be in there just because the water is high, but that's kind of a rule of thumb. We've figured out, uh, you know, fishermen for generations have figured out that they will use those mangrove roots for, for protection and for ambush points. And when the water gets low, at a certain point where the fish want to get out of there, if it gets too skinny, they move out further, or they'll follow the bait that might have been in there as well. They'll follow it out, and they'll find a happy place. They'll find a zone. And right where you see my lure right there is where the strike zone was. So we'll play this right here, and you'll see what happens. Ooh, <laughs> shot at it. Nice red. Let's move it up a little bit. There's a really good pop. So you can see again, kind of in the same zone right there, just gets totally blasted. This is a really good hit. Absolutely smashed it. It's cool to see him do that. You know, I didn't hook that fish, but it, it's just fun to watch anyway. Moving up. There's a really good pop right there. Again, bringing that lure from the mangroves back across the strike zone and roughly in the same area just gets blasted. Slow-mo for you. Really impressive strike. So now I'm going to switch to the live target twitched minnow on a weedless hook rig. Having trouble snagging the grass. So I'm going to switch to that lure, throw it out there, and get my first fish on camera today, on this day. There he is right there. Bang. Working it about the same as I am the, the skitter walk, close to the surface, a rapid twitch. Didn't take long for him to find it. So as you can see, this fish again is a good distance away from the shoreline and he's probably sitting there nose into the current waiting for that food to come to him you can see all the grass and the water that's being pulled in on the tide tons of grass it was so hard to throw that skitter walk anywhere except right up towards the branches here and work it through that zone anywhere out in this area i was just getting absolutely covered in grass it was really frustrating so threw that soft plastic out there and got nailed move it ahead Move ahead a little more. Here's another fish. Nice snook. Going back to the skitter walk, they stopped hitting the twitch of minnow. Going back to this. Good selection of lures there. Top to bottom. Live target twitch of minnow. Rapple a twitch of mullet. Rapple a twitch of minnow. Heading super spook, the all-time favorite, the skitter walk, skitter V, which is very similar to this, but it has a V hole bottom, and it supposedly turns tighter, turns sharper, which is pretty cool. And then you have the Yozuri Hydro Pencil. All good lures. Let's go ahead and move ahead. That was a really nice redfish right there. I was pretty bummed at that one. I'm going to get visibly frustrated. <laughs> All right, we'll play the video. That's a red. That's a red fish. Oh, you son of a... Don't know what happened there. I stuck that fish really good, and it still came off. So, frustrated. That would have been the best fish of the day, for sure. And there was quite a few reds in here feeding. Had quite a few bites from them, but just wasn't able to connect. Moving ahead. There's another good bite. We'll skip through that. There's a fish. Let's get that bite on camera or on the review here, on the playback, the play-by-play. -play. Move back one more. Okay, so this bite, it actually wasn't really a, a tremendous hit. He just came up and slurped the whole thing in, and he, he probably had it better than all the other fish. Just came up and slurped, just like a lot of snook will do. There he is. Nice snook. That's a good snook. I got the hooks deep in that one. one of the best fish of the day right there. Let's get that slow-mo flying leap. 
beautiful. Nice jump. All right, let's get him in the boat. And there's our thumbnail image right there. Absolutely choked it. Now there's that seagrass I was talking about. Really beautiful seagrass flats here in Tampa Bay. We're really blessed. We have uh, a lot of seagrass have, has spread and grown over the decades. Um, I believe at one time it was severely reduced due to water quality problems. However, it's everywhere now. So we got manatee grass and turtle grass all over the place. It's really beautiful flats. If you have seagrass beds in your area, make sure they're protected. Do what you can to not damage them. Let's back that up. This is a really good bite right here. Awesome hit. Another redfish bite there. Let's keep going. Cool angle here. We don't get this angle too much, but Cameron hopped out of the out of the boat and set up, and we got a nice fish on camera here. Something else that was going on off here, off screen, and around over here. I think we only got maybe a little piece of it, but there were some big fish chasing some mullet in there. And, I wasn't able to really get to them because I'd throw my lure out there and it would just get covered in grass. I tried the weedless rig and they wouldn't hit it. I don't know what was going on. I think they just liked the profile, that skitter walk. I think the skitter walk has the profile that is big enough and interesting enough for a really trophy sized fish to hit, but it's also you know, small enough to where a lot of average fish will hit it. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so attractive. And I think the rattles in it sound really good as well. So we'll go ahead and bring this fish to the boat here. He popped off. No big deal. He's a little guy. Last fish right here. Really good take on this one. Nice fish. Nice take. Not a huge fish, but man, he crushed it. Let's move forward. Well, I have had an amazing day. I haven't had a topwater fishing day this good in a long time. I'm trying to put more effort into fishing with artificial lures, and it's definitely paying off. We literally came into this bayou and started filming tip videos, and the action just happened all around us. There's tons of life on the flat, made a few casts, got blasted a few times. I mean, it was just on for a solid two hours at every other cast, boom, every other cast, boom. Absolutely amazing fishing. Tampa Bay does it again. Yeah, it's that's exactly what happened. I mean, it just this whole area just started going off on its own. And it didn't take any real discovery for me. I just sat there and watched it and I said, Oh, I guess it's time to start fishing. So you saw that mullet jump out of the water. They were all over the place. They were surrounding the boat. Out here where I was talking about uh, a second ago, that's where those big fish were sitting out here chasing those mullet. And uh, you may have even seen a few fish kind of ripple the water over in this area a second ago just a really really good day of fishing and i've fallen back in love with artificial lure fishing live bait is king in tampa bay however i think artificial lures can be really good now i've, I've got a lot of faith in it and on my own personal time i think lures will continue to be my favorite i think they'll start to dominate i think i won't use as much live bait but anyway, I appreciate you coming by the channel. I appreciate you checking out the tips, the breakdown. I really enjoy doing these breakdown videos, and there's a lot more of that coming. Uh, right now, we wanted to film this week, but it's extra windy out there. It's really hard to do anything. You got 25 mile per hour wind, 25 mile per hour winds, and it's just really hard to do much with that. But anyway, again, thank you very much. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification button so you get notified of all our uploads, email headfirstfishing at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you.